Welcome to Jupiter Dermatology and Hair Restoration at our Mohs Micrographic Surgery Center. In this video, you're going to experience what patients go through and what the procedure is all about when you have Mohs and plastic surgery reconstruction all in one day. So come with me and I'll give you a little tour of what Mohs is all about. So come this way. The first part of the procedure is to meet and consult with the patient. This actually Remove this little surgical piece here. You're going to have a little circle here and a little hole, right. and we're going to have to pull it together. What we're going to do is pull the skin together like that, and mm -hmm. you see as it comes together, we're going to have to make either a little line like this, okay, mm -hmm. or we do sometimes a little flap, okay, okay. or we take skin and move it over. Uh, I actually like doing the flaps in this situation because it saves on hair loss. Mm -hmm. And as a hair transplant surgeon, I'm always very sensitive about you know losing yeah, every little moves. follicle. So um, you'll either have like a little Z there or a straight line. Okay. okay. So let's first get the skin cancer out and then we'll go from there. So that's what has to be removed. Right. Now, what did you first notice when you saw it? It started out like a pimple, okay. and then it, but it was like white and a little crusty. Okay. And and that's what most patients, unfortunately, recognize on their skin. Mm -hmm. It's something that starts like a pimple, and if something starts like a pimple and it doesn't go away, that's when it needs attention. Mm -hmm. And you may have a little line going up and down your cheek like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you take a look in this mirror. Okay. All right, okay. we're going to do a little plastic surgery to get the skin to heal correctly. Okay. okay. You see this little spot here? Yes. Okay, that's where we numbed up around that. That's the little basal cell, correct? We confirm the spot? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're going to do is cut around this little basal cell and make sure we get all the roots out. Okay? Mm -hmm. Once we get all the roots out, we're done. Now basal cells can spread. They can go a little bit larger and, and, and be a little bit bigger than that. In rare situations, it's always possible that, you know, the cancer could spread and we could have a, a fairly good sizable defect or it could be nice and small. Right. If it's small enough, we're probably just going to be able to put a couple tiny stitches in there, make it look nice, might have a little line there. Mm -hmm. In a rare situation, if you have a fairly large skin cancer, which I don't think that this might be the case, you know, we might have to borrow some skin from your ear in front or behind mm -hmm. and then patch it with a skin graft or do a flap of some sort, right. which is moving tissue around. Right. The advantage of the Mohs is it gives you the highest cure rate with the lowest chance of recurrence. Okay. And the advantage is that we take a little small piece of skin out right. and we're going to examine it in a 360 degree plane. Mm -hmm. What we do is we take that tissue, we lie it flat and we cut it horizontally so we can look at the 360 degree surface and make sure that there's no skin cancer cells. After the consultation, the area is anesthetized with lidocaine so no pain is felt. Once the area has been anesthetized, we will begin with surgical extraction of the cancerous tumor. Mohs surgery is primarily used in cosmetically sensitive areas such as the face and other areas where tissue sparing technique is necessary. There are a variety of locations that are used where a small area is removed to give you the highest cure rate and the lowest chance of recurrence. After the tumor is removed, the patient will be bandaged and placed in a comfortable position. During this time, they can relax and read a book, they can watch TV, or they can just sit back and relax and take a nap while the tissue is being processed microscopically. Once the tissue is removed, we will orient it according to the anatomical location of the patient's body and assure proper orientation by color coding the tissue to correspond with our map. So when we view the tissue histologically under the microscope, we know exactly where any tumor may be on the patient's body. Typically, we will color code a blue ink on the 12 o'clock portion, red ink on the 6 o'clock, and three will be yellow to identify the exact orientation. So this is a cryostat machine, and the purpose of Mohs is to remove the skin cancer tissue, to freeze it in this cryostat machine, and then to cut it into thin slices in a horizontal fashion so we can look at 360 degree view of the skin to make sure that there's no skin cancer on the edges and in the deep plane. And that is the whole benefit of Mohs is that we give you the highest cure rate 
with the lowest chance of recurrence and also trying to keep the defect or the scar size the smallest. In most surgery, Dr. Mejia or the most surgeon functions as both pathologist and surgeon. Here you can see at the very bottom of the slide a nest of purple cells called basal cells. This corresponds based on the inking pattern to an exact location where tumor is still on the patient's skin. We can see here in the map we mark in red to identify the exact location. The Mohs surgeon or Dr. Mejia will then return and take a second piece of tissue from this area with minimal margins to assure clear margins. What we do is we match the specimen to the map so that we can see exactly where the skin cancer is positive. So if we see it's positive in this end here, it should match this area here and we'll know exactly where to go back and take uh, an additional layer if he's positive. Once we have clear margins, the patient will then return and be sterilized and cleaned so we can begin the plastic surgery reconstruction. This is a method of pulling the skin together in an appropriate cosmetically sensitive manner so that we minimize any appearance of blind scars. After the plastic surgery, we will apply topical antibacterial ointment to the area and bandage the lesions. The patient will be shown in a mirror so that they can evaluate and learn how to take care of this at home. Mm -hmm. See that little line there? Yeah. Yeah, so it's come together nicely and when it all heals, you'll hardly notice anything. Okay. Okay? Okay. So the last part of the procedure is really suture removal. So patients come in at about one week and this is one week after surgery and unfortunately a fairly large skin cancer that we had to remove here. And then it's just a matter of removing the stitches. So that's what we're going to do. So we just very gently remove these stitches and hope that uh, he's not feeling any pain. You're not feeling too much pain, are you? No, sir. Okay, wonderful. And then we're just going to remove these stitches one by one and then slowly get rid of them. Unfortunately, he had a surgery here and we did a big surgery right here and there's not much evidence that there's a scar there. Now there is a scar, but it's the point is to try to make it look as invisible as possible. And then once the sutures are out completely, we just tell patients to keep a little ointment on it for the next couple weeks until it heals. And that is the completion of Mohs surgery and then follow up good skin care. When you did this, uh, people say, you had a, uh, yeah, I said, Dr. Mahid did this. We can't even tell you did it. I said, well, that's why we're doing the other side. You did so this well. one over here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see much there. It looks great. When I found out that I had skin cancer, I was very much devastated. I went to multiple doctors to find out, you know, to see who I felt most comfortable with. And I was, had some great referrals from some friends for Dr. Mojia. I came to him, he had great bedside matters and made me feel very comfortable. We ended up having to do six rounds of Mohs on the side of my nose right here. So you can see that you can hardly see a scar now. It came out amazingly well. The scar is very light. Honestly, if you didn't know it was there, you would probably never notice it. I have to bring it to people's attention and show it. And it's like, where, where? And I show them and then, oh, but it's really almost been like a magnifying glass to see it. it. does do plastic surgeon techniques. And my other doctors that have looked at me since my surgery have been very much amazed at how well and how amazing my um, most surgery turned out. Not self-conscious of thinking people are staring at my nose because that was my biggest fear when I was having the surgery done that you know everybody's gonna be staring at me like what happened to her and I don't have that feeling because the results was amazing. Dr. Mahia removed something off my chest that was a basal cell and about six months later I was looking for the scar in the mirror and I couldn't even find it. He did such an excellent job. I saw Dr. Mejia about a month ago for a squamous cell carcinoma up here on my forehead. If I didn't see the six stitches myself, I wouldn't have even believed that I had six sutures up here on my forehead. Um, over here on the side of my nose, and um, I had already been to my dermatologist um, to have my face looked at when she did the, the biopsy, and she said that she didn't see anything else on my face, so it was almost like he had x-ray vision. Um, when he noticed this thing on the side of my nose that nobody else had noticed, Sure enough, that came out positive also was uh, basal cell carcinoma. So I came in last week, had the uh, most surgery done on the side of my nose, and um, I just came in today to get my sutures removed, 
and um, if I didn't know that the, su the sutures were there, again, I wouldn't believe that I even had them to begin with. He's great. He did a great job. I would recommend him to anybody.